Hello, I'm Rod Howe. I'm the Executive Director of the History Center in Tompkins County, and we're here today to talk about the emerging Tompkins Center for History and Culture. This started because the History Center has to move. Our 25-year lease at the Gateway Plaza, 401 East State Street, will end at the end of 2018. We've been many locations since the inception of the History Center. Some folks still will remember our name as the DeWitt Historical Society, although that name was changed about 20 years ago. The trustees saw this as an opportunity to do something bold, dynamic, and innovative. So we started thinking about this idea of being co-located with other partners. And of course, we really weren't sure where we were going to end up, but we'll, we'll tell that story as part of today's discussion. With me today is Jennifer Tavares. She's the president of the Tompkins County Chamber of Commerce. So thank you, Jennifer, for being Absolutely. here and talking about the Tompkins Center for uh, History and Culture. Thanks for having now, me. Now, some of the other partners uh, will be, besides the Visitor Center, which we'll talk about in a minute, will be the Wharton Studio Museum, Historic Ithaca, the Community Arts Partnership. Jennifer's here to uh, remind me if I miss someone. The Dorothy Cotton Institute, the Sustainability Center, the Discovery Trail, and to, to an extent, the Ithaca Aviation Heritage Foundation, but we'll talk about how they're going to be present uh, in the building. So Jennifer, but let's start with a focus on the Chamber and the Visitor Center. How did the Chamber get involved, and how do you see the Visitor Center as being a very important component of this initiative? Sure. Uh, well, Rod, quite honestly, I think the first time that you and I ever sat down for a meeting I don't know. It's been going on a while. Hasn't two and it? a half, three years ago now, um, you talked about this notion of um, you know the needs of the history center and an eventual move for the history center, and you know at that point I think really not having a lot of ideas about what was going to grow from there, but you know knowing that at some point you'd need to be moving and that you know a, a stronger community presence was a big part of that, a bigger location somewhere that's more accessible to the community, to residents, to visitors as well. Um, so that was sort of the first spark I think that I saw a, about this project. And I think, I can't remember how many months went by or, or how much time went by, um, but the, so many people may not know the structure of our organization. So we're the Tompkins County Chamber of Commerce, but we also uh, manage the uh, Tompkins County's uh, tourism brand, which is Visit Ithaca. Um, as part of the work that we do uh, managing Visit Ithaca is operating um, three visitor centers now. It used to be two visitor centers, but we have um, a visitor center at East Shore Drive at our main office. We have the Taganic Overlook Visitor Center, which is newly opened um, in partnership with New York State Parks last year. And then we have a downtown visitor center. Um, which, you know, so collaborations and partnerships are not new to us. We do that all the time in a lot of different ways. But the Downtown Visitor Center currently is actually a partnership with multiple organizations mm -hmm. involved. Um, the CVB, Ithaca Tompkins County Convention and Visitors Bureau, which is sort of the division of the chamber that does all this work um, operating those visitor centers, um, is, is co-located with um, Community Arts Partnership and um, to a lesser extent the Downtown Ithaca Alliance at our existing Downtown Visitor Center, which is located in Center Ithaca, um, for anyone who hasn't been there or hasn't noticed it. Um, and so, you know, a, a, at least a couple years back mm -hmm. when um, some components of the tourism program were really looking at how to implement certain aspects of the county's strategic tourism plan. Um, there's a 2020 plan for implementing um, product development and enhancing marketing efforts countywide for uh, various components of the tourism economy here. And we, we definitely see heritage tourism right. as being very front and central in this exactly, new location. Exactly. So, um, yeah, that plan identifies a couple of really unique niche areas where, um, where we could further develop our tourism product, right? So, as you said, heritage tourism was one of those areas. Another one was agriculinary tourism, for example, which is another um, subset of some of the work that we do. And there's other entities countywide sort of working on um, trying to help develop these niche mm -hmm. tourism markets. But a couple of years ago, you, Rod, and, and some other folks from the Strategic Tourism Planning Board, Tom Knipe, who at the time was the Tompkins mm -hmm. County Tourism um, Planner, and some CVB team members really started getting into the nitty gritty on um, what does a heritage tourism mm -hmm. development plan look like for Tompkins County. And so, you know, from my perspective, it's it's been a long time in development, right? It started out as an idea of mm -hmm. 
hey, wouldn't a, um, a project which um, brings these collaborating partners together, which not only creates a new home for the History Center, an expanded presence, a, a bigger, better, mm -hmm. um, more modern, even though it's history, right, right that we're talking right. about, uh, a more modern and, and well-developed exhibit um, space. Um, and, and what would that look like if it was paired with the Downtown Visitor mm -hmm. Center and some of these other partners? Um, so I know that from the beginning we were viewed, or the CVB's Downtown Visitor Center was viewed, I think, as one of the key potential partnerships that could help make this project work. We're, we're very excited. I know we've used the word destination. We really want this to be a destination spot for not only county residents, but tourists as well. And being right on the commons should be, I don't know that we actually said where we're going to be. We're going right. to be where the Tompkins Trust Company Bank is currently on Bank Alley. They're building a new building around the corner, of course. So it's actually two historic buildings with, I think there was a, a building in between the two that probably burned down at mm -hmm. some point, and, mm -hmm. and we're going to interpret the story of those two historic buildings. So we, we think being right on the commons, it will be a destination. Uh, you used the word early on that we want this to be spectacular. So we are, we've been working with Stream Collaborative as our architects and with a design firm out of New York City, Tessellate Design. Let's look at some images that are renderings of the exterior, but more the interior of the building great. and explain to folks how it's starting to come together. That would be great. So what you're seeing now is, uh, hopefully that uh, space looks familiar. It is uh, currently used as the Tompkins Trust Company Bank on Bank Alley. Uh, this is, you know, the renderings keep changing. This doesn't show that there will actually be a doorway to the right of the main entrance that will uh, have the name Tompkins Trust Company on it. They'll have a small space in the building. So we, we've updated uh, the drawings to show that, uh, but you'll see the main uh, atrium is where you're entering uh, the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. We've been working with Iron Design to help us brand. This shows an interior of the library. Right now, it's the John Marsham Research Library in our current location. And so this shows what the interior view might look like of our new library space. So this image is actually uh, a rendering of what the visitor center and retail store could look like. Um, folks who've been in our downtown visitor center now might know that predominantly it's, it's visitor services. We, we have staff members who help visitors to the community um, learn what might be available to them here. We have a whole lot of paper brochures available. We also help with some, um, you know, internet, uh, you know, search support and whatnot. Um, but in this uh, new visitor center, there will be a retail gift shop, uh, which will represent not just um, the Convention and Visitors Bureau selling some of our Ithaca's Gorgeous gear, which is selling really well at our Teganic Overlook gift shop, but also include um, representation um, from each of the partners. So the History Center, you have some maps and some books and um, postcards, some postcards and, and other um, memorabilia. Um, that you make available on the Wharton Studio Museum will likely have some silent movie history based um, retail items where we're uh, very excited to be working with Discovery Trail and some of those partners to be um, for the first time um, helping uh, some of the Discovery Trail partners have a small presence in a gift shop down on the commons. Um, our goal is really to, to bring product in that will appeal to visitors to Tompkins County, residents alike as well, um, but to do so in a way that respects all of the other uh, retailers in the downtown area. We're not looking to um, compete with them, but to complement right. everything else that's available downtown. This just um, shows another view of that retail space. Uh, I think we can go on to the next uh, slide. This just shows the, the main entryway. We're, we are working, as I said, with Iron Design and uh, Tessellate to think about sort of the branding. Uh, so this just shows you an image of the outside of the building. We'll move on to the next. Uh, this is the atrium space, and we're still making some decisions, but it, it will be a fairly substantial space that people can come into and be oriented into the space. So there will be a wonderful graphic along one side of the window. This happens to show Taganic Falls. There will be certainly the images of all the partners that will be in the space, uh, certainly a, a way to recognize the donors uh, who have helped make the Tompkins Center for History and Culture viable. It's a place for people to come and gather as they're waiting for others. There will be a tower uh, in the atrium that will be a changing tower that will show uh, exhibits from one of the partners, or it might be Cornell University has it for a month, or Tompkins Cortland Community College, or Ithaca College, or some other 
partner that's not part of the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. So it's really a space that people can gather, be oriented. There will be a, a kiosk that people can dive more deeply into learning what's happening in the space with that day and that week, but also learn more about the partners. And uh, I think that these images are really compelling because um, they help convey the variety and, and, and the different types of partners that are collaborating in this project. I know you ran down the list earlier, but I think the fact that this space will be able to combine um, the arts, um, you know, certainly our rich history, the landscape and the topography of the area, and how much the outdoor recreation opportunities here have really meant um, both in terms of how um, how life has developed in Tompkins County, but also in terms of what most of the visitors who come here actually want to do when they get here. You know, they, they want to go and, and look at our gorges and our waterfalls, and um, you know, there's there's so much more history there, obviously, even than um, than we can identify with as uh, as humans. Um, yeah, I <laughs> but think it's really incredible. It's to it, there's multiple reasons that people will have to come into the building. Yep. They'll either want to come in and learn more about the visitors. Uh, resources available. Mm -hmm. They might mm -hmm. come and want to look at the exhibits. They might come to see the art gallery that will, Community Arts mm -hmm. Partnership will mm -hmm. oversee, or programs will also happen in that room, or go to one of the offices of our partners. You saw an image of the Tommy plane in one of the images. So hopefully folks know about the Tommy plane. It was uh, built here at Morse Jane in 1917. It's going to be very prominent in the exhibit space. And we want everyone to make sure that they're reserving September 29th. That's the day the plane will fly out of the Ithaca Airport. It will be a big uh, deal. Uh, but then it will become a permanent exhibit uh, in the space. Uh, the, of course, the research library will also be on the first floor. People will be coming for conferences probably. There, there's a small conference room. There's a larger conference room. So it might be that other partners outside of uh, the center are using the space. Of course, we're going to use the space to highlight artifacts of the History Center, uh, maps, uh, photos, uh, any number of things. So there's, uh, we encourage you to go to the Tompkins-Center.net to, to learn more about the center. Oh, we should mention this other image you're looking at. There will be one of the vaults uh, will be used as like a story court where people can go in and record their own stories I think there's also an image of a timeline. We're using two of the vaults. Is. This is the image of two of the vaults that will be used as a walk-through timeline that I think will become a very popular and mm -hmm. well-discussed and well -discussed, uh, feature of the space. I think one thing that's interesting to note is so the, the theme of the entire center um, is being organized um, under the uh, acronym PLACE. So people, landscape, architecture, architecture, culture, and enterprise. Correct. I finally have learned um, that. There's too many acronyms in our world these days. But um, so the, the, so the story pods woven throughout the main exhibit right. space will each be focused on one of these areas. Um, and the, because the, the History Center has so many artifacts and there's really such um, depth and, and, and just such a large quantity of stories that we'd like to tell, but there's only limited space to do that right. in. Um, that the project's going to utilize digital technology um, and visitors will be able to find their way through some of the topic areas that they want to explore more deeply and also learn about all the different project, uh, or I'm sorry, project partners um, that are part of the Tompkins Center for History and Culture that way as well. I don't know if you want to maybe say a little bit more about sort of how we're going to educate people and how, how these stories are going to be available to Yeah, visitors. one thing that's, that will be different from our current space, the History Center space, is you can walk into our current space and they're, they're, you know, we have changing exhibits or in the past we've had changing exhibits. We really want visitors to be able to come to the space and get a, a sense of what is the history of Ithaca and Tompkins County. So I think these towers, the timeline, will help us do that. There will be enough changing elements within the towers that even residents will be drawn to come back, back. Uh, but I, I, I think it will also be interesting that uh, there's going to be a space dedicated to the Cuga Nation, so we can interpret the indigenous population on this land, uh, because we want to make sure that people sure. know that it didn't start in 1817 when the county was mm -hmm. officially formed. So there's there's stories going back centuries that we want to help tell, and we really do see this. We want this to be a, a sense of pridefulness that county mm -hmm. residents are. They love this place. They want to tell every visitor about this place that they'll want to come to because of the changing programs that happen in the space. It really is meant to 
get visitors in mm -hmm. and then go out and explore the county. Absolutely. Uh, so that sort of whet their appetite for what they might go mm -hmm. out and explore. And so that's going to be very important to the visitor Absolutely. center. So we, we just have a minute left. So is there something wow. else, Jennifer, that you want to say about the chambers or visit Ithaca or the visitor center's perspective? Um, I mean, we're certainly excited about the synergy and the opportunities here. Um, we currently see around, you know, 9,000 visitors annually at our downtown visitor center. Again, we provide them with, you know, wayfinding assistance in downtown Ithaca and then also to help deploy them um, elsewhere in the county. And so, you know, this project will, you know, none of us really know, right? We have thoughts on how many visitors um, 30, we might like to see. I think what we're Our saying. initial goal is 30,000. That's just sort of, uh, you know, a, a conservative estimate based on how many right. um, people all of our individual organizations touch in a given year now, right, with our existing capacity. Um, and I think, you know, the, the most exciting thing is just, you know, being able to pull all this together, watch all of these different partners. It's, it's a lot of work, right? Mm -hmm. So Rod and several other partners have done a tremendous amount of work over the last couple of years, and we've got at least another year's worth of right. that work to go. Um, but, you know, the, the the benefits will absolutely outweigh the costs, um, the time investment and the, um, the collaborative investment that all of these partners have pulled together um, is going to result in something that's more than the sum of its parts. Um, and, and so, you know, for us, it's really about opportunity. It's about, no, we don't really know how many new visitors mm -hmm. it will attract, how much more, um, more traffic it might bring to the commons, but um, certainly this location that will look spectacular and <laughs> that will, you know, have fresh branding, have fresh excitement around it, um, is going to bring more people in to see um, you and the History Center, is going to bring more people into our downtown visitor right. center. It's situated right near where so much of the activity on the right. commons happens with the Bernie Milton Pavilion right there. Um, so, you know, if you think about just the energy that things like um, gallery nights bring to downtown and concert series and, um, the festivals and events that that come downtown um, you know there really is a lot of potential here and we're excited um, to well, continue Jennifer, working on it we're so glad that the chamber uh, wants to be part of it or is part of it so jennifer tavares president of the chamber of commerce in tompkins county uh, there's a part two so stay tuned for part two we're going to switch gears and uh, continue the discussion but jennifer thank you very much for being Thanks with so much, us Rod. This is Rod Howe again. We're, we're back for part two of this discussion about the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. And with me now is Rich John, who's a Tompkins County legislator. He represents District 4. So Rich, thank uh, you very much. Uh, thank you for having me in. I'm so excited to be here and to talk about this great project. This is a, a real big issue. Well, big thing for the county. And, and so can you tell a little bit about why the county sees their role, but also we want to make sure that folks understand the role of the Tompkins Trust Company in all of this as well. Well, certainly when the History Center and the several not-for-profits and, um, and the Visitors Bureau came and said, we have this idea, this was really new and different for the county. Mm -hmm. So this was something we had to digest and figure out, is this something we can be involved with? And it's been a very long process. Uh, there were extensive discussions and then negotiations with the trust company, successful, mm -hmm. and we were really fortunate in that the timing worked and that the trust company was at a point they wanted to sell this building and at a price that the county could afford. At the same time as not just the History Center, but all of these not-for-profits were coming together saying, we want to do something together. Uh, it's it's a great opportunity and I've been continually impressed with the amount of public support that's come forward from so many different directions to say yeah we get it mm -hmm. this is going to be something special as you, you use the word spectacular yeah and well Jennifer I think is the first person we, we talked about that in the <laughs> last segment but you know really I do want to thank Tompkins County government and also the Tompkins Trust Company Bank because without their interest and involvement and willingness to kind of work through some details, 
this wouldn't happen. So we look forward to the, the county government being our landlords uh, yeah. in this spectacular <laughs> space. Well, I would say thank you to the trust company for their, their effort in this process. And thank you, uh, or you're welcome from the county. Uh, this, is, um, this is a recognition in some measure of our 200th anniversary right. too. And so that was pretty special that in 2017, we were saying we wanted to do something important to recognize how long the county has been in operation and how important it has been to the community. And this is a great representation of that, that we are taking this on. I think it will be a great legacy of the Tompkins County Bicentennial that this, this is sort of a result of one of that. Let's talk a little bit about the timeline. So uh, do you want to get us started and I'll chime in on what's going to happen in the next several months? Well, I do want to recognize we've had a few meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this, going back for a couple of years. <laughs> we've been talking about this for a long time. We're getting to a very exciting moment because we're in the bid process and we anticipate closing within the next two months on the purchase of the building. The trust company will be moving into their new space on Seneca Street and this building will then be owned by the county. We are going to be doing a lot of code improvements and the not-for-profit coalition is coming in to do significant upgrades to the building to, again, we keep using that word spectacular, right. to set a real high bar for what we want to try to do with this space. It's going to be a, obviously a collaboration between the county and the private groups, um, but we will be seeing the construction taking place starting in late spring all the way through the summer with the idea that we are going to have this building open right around the end of the year. Yeah, so the, many of the partners are hoping to move in before the close of 2018, including the History Center. Some other show will talk about this human brigade that we're starting to envision <laughs> moving the last 25 <laughs> objects person to person from the doors of the History Center to the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. Um, you know, we know it will take us probably a while to kind of get organized after January, but certainly the goal is to get us all moved in uh, and then be up and running fairly soon in 2019. One of the things we haven't talked about is the funding. So we were very fortunate to receive some state funding for the project uh, through the consolidated funding application process. So NISCA, the New York State Council on the Arts and Empire State Development are part of that. Barbara Lifton has expressed yes. some interest in uh, bringing some additional state funding uh, into that mix. So we know we've got a county partner who's putting resource to the table, the state is. And then from a capital campaign perspective, we're looking for folks from across the county to, uh, to donate uh, resources to this. So I don't know if there's anything you want to say about the, the funding that's coming together for the project. I do, I do. And that um, from the county's standpoint, we look at this as an investment, you know, from the, and that's important if you were a taxpayer, obviously, mm -hmm. that we're not just spending money, but we were taking money that we've been holding that we received because of the new casinos in New York State. And we weren't sure what to do with this money, and we're not yet sure that that's a consistent revenue source we can depend on. But we did have a substantial amount of money that we've received. And the idea being that instead of holding it in cash, we're going to put it into bricks and mortar. So we really haven't spent taxpayers' money. We've invested it. We're going to own this building. And presumably, it's going to grow in value, and it's going to be a great civic community resource in the process. Um, and that, that's the county's contribution. In addition to the funds coming from New York State and we, the additional ones Barbara Lifton is hoping to bring, and the capital campaign, mm -hmm. which I'm happy to say there's been some real support. Mm -hmm. And you could speak more to that. But it's coming from a lot of different directions to really make a great project. Yeah, I will say there's still naming opportunities left. So <laughs> if you're watching the show and want your name associated with one of the uh, features inside, uh, just contact me. Uh, we're continue to reach out. We're, start, we're still in kind of a silent phase, although everyone knows we're doing a capital campaign, but we're doing much more outreach fairly soon to the broader public because we want everyone to participate to some level in making this happen. Uh, so it's, it's been a very exciting process. It, it was even interesting coming up with a name for the building. So I think everyone likes Tompkins Center for History and Culture. It will be interesting to see if people, the shorthand way that people end up referring to it as. It might just be Tompkins Center, which to me would be fine because we really do see this as a place where discussions will happen as well. You know, one of the, um, 
the themes that the partners are very interested in is past, present, and future. So not just to come and think about the past, but a place to come and engage with the current issues facing the community and thinking about how Ithaca and Tompkins County will be in the future. So anything you want to add to that? Yeah, certainly we've talked a lot about what are we going to call the, the building. And it, it is certainly the um, historic trust company building. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in its long past history, it was where the county clerk was. Right. So there's a, a circle there. Um, I would add that even though it's, it's there, but it, it is a county building. And part of the function of having the visitor center there and the history center museum is to act as a focal point for the whole county. Right. And you, I know you mentioned this in the first part, but this is, a, this is going to be something that invites visitors to come right. find out how to explore the whole county. We live in a great place. We're, you know, one of the wonderful places in the world. And this is a gateway. It's like the, the lobby for our county. Um, it's going to do good things there, I think. And I, I did want to make sure that was mentioned because it's in my district. Right. So, right. so I have a particular <clears throat> interest in in saying this is going to do great stuff for the Ithaca Commons. It's going to be really good for all the not-for-profits involved. It's going to hopefully help all the businesses on the Commons um, and make our downtown more vibrant. But it's also going to be good for our whole county. Right. We see it as a place where folks within the county can continue to come and get to know each other, learn about each other's history as a way of building community. So it's both specific for the county, but then this gateway for visitors to go out and explore not only Ithaca and Tompkins County, but then the greater Finger Lakes region. So, Rich, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, we, w we hope to do more shows. We'll bring in other partners to talk about the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. You'll see the website for that on the screen, as well as the website for the History Center in Tompkins County. We want you to keep engaging with the History Center. It's certainly going to be a transition year for us as we pack. We still need uh, volunteers, so if you're interested in helping <laughs> us pack, be in touch with us. But we're, we're going to continue to do robust programming this year as well. So stay tuned. There's lots more to hear about the Tompkins Center for History and Culture. Thank you for listening to the show today.